one, eh? Hey. Three, two, one. Welcome back to hopefully your favorite podcast, episode 37 of Off Topic. I am once again your host, Jared, settled in the niceties of the stand and lounge. Mm. Back in the passenger, not in the passenger seat, sorry, in the co seat, back in the cockpit with me, should I say, is my host, my confidant, Mr. Andrew Miller. Hey, yep, back in the co pilot seat. Uh, welcome back to, uh, like Jared said, hopefully your favorite podcast. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you um, to everyone with such amazing messages uh, for being patient. I know I've been away from the mic for a while now, um, and we'll get into that um, in a little bit. Um, I want to say thanks to Ethan and James, James, yeah, for doing a pod, and thank you to Hendo for also filling in. Um, I know it's difficult for Jared um, to kind of keep this ball rolling by himself we're kind of like a a duo content sort of thing so i like and big shout out to you jared for trying to keep that thing going um and it's difficult right to get a few guests and, and people in and and wanting to speak and it's definitely hard to do those solo ones so you know big ups to everyone for um yeah thank, filling in and yeah the the, the solo ones became a bit of a ball ache <laughs> and a sense of like i think the one thing that we do that really helps us is the planning process and also yeah. like the day in day out living with each, oh, living kind of yeah within each other's like, with, like in, in each other's dis- realms i was gonna say in each other's pockets <laughs> we don't even live together <laughs> yeah i mean we, t- we talk daily right so yeah um we, we we know what's going on in each other's lives and it's easy to organize things and then it's easy to uh kind of talk uh sorry to build a, From a podcast that, yeah. yeah so um yeah so thank you to everyone that's been helping out um i will just quickly go into something like why i've been away um obviously first up uh injury update i got the moon boot off today so there you go there's a bit of leg for you snaps um uh so for anyone that didn't know i uh basically rolled my ankle um ahead <laughs> <Sorry>. yeah <laughs> yeah i just i just rolled my ankle now i was playing playing football rolled the ankle uh had two complete ruptures uh sorry ligament ruptures on the outside had two tears on the inside they took a hamstring tendon out and then reattached my ankle on the outside so um i'm now out of the boot post-surgery it's been i don't know like four months five months since i've been at work so i've been i'm hiding away (laughs) yeah a very long time i've been off work skip winter all together yeah i've been up um north living with my parents um staying up there um recovering so i got the boot off today and and rehab starts i should be back at work four to five weeks now so nice yeah i mean it's been difficult uh trying to just like exist (laughs) you know what i mean just uh i feel like i'm doing nothing all the time legs are up watching tv i've fucking watched so much tv yeah um just not being able to get any exercise in and then you're also living at home you know when you go home and your mum cooks you like four meals a day and it's yeah 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 yeah. so so. that's all we've said it on the pod before the sue treatment is a treatment like no other exactly so yeah it's that's um what was the a bit of core pie mm. Uh, a lot lot of roast dinners uh, a lot of lasagna things like that and um sheesh so yeah um but that's only one sort of aspect of uh, where why I've been away. Um, uh, it's been a tough journey. Um, for those that didn't know, my dad, uh, Trevor Miller, um, has been fighting cancer for nearly uh, the best part of nearly three years. Um, unfortunately, last month he passed away. Um, it's been a very tough journey for himself and for my family and my friends and um uh we've been battling this for a long time um and <coughs> it's been hard um dealing with it so uh like i said like about a month ago um he did pass away and i've, I've kind of been in this weird limbo state where i've been dealing with that been dealing with the injury and i just needed a bit of time to get away from from everything yeah. and, uh, and not Be just not the just family. the podcast but just just from everything you know i just needed some time to think and everything so yeah so um it's been tough um you know he was my absolute hero uh you know he's your old man is is a 
as a male losing a dad is um you know it's unparalleled to anything it's it's pretty whack <laughs> to say the least <laughs> you know it's it's someone you've always looked up to and you admire you know mm. ev- everyone has it's the patriarch uh, of the household that's right you know and he's, he's always done by uh done right by us and um you know i only wish that i could be half the man that he was you know um yeah mate it's it's yeah so it's a tough ride and it has been for the last three years we've been the whole family's been dealing with it um yeah and you know it's not quite over yet but i've got a good support system around me you know like thank you to all my family all my friends all the what uh, <clears throat> kind words from everyone all the support has been amazing um yeah it's it's surreal it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel real you know just feel like he's off on a fishing trip or something um and he's gonna come home home soon or something like that it's just it just it's such a weird thing to have to go through um but yeah i thank you to everyone that's been so supportive um yeah and that's that's why i've been away it's it's, it's, it's it's heavy stuff man it's heavy stuff and i i wanted to shed some light on it you know i didn't want to leave people in the dark i know uh, some people will be like, oh, well, where's Andy? Where's this? Where's, you know, why is he away? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so I just I thought I owed it to you guys and uh, owed it to myself to um, shed some light on it and, um, yeah, just give you a bit of an update where I'm at. I'm doing okay. <laughs> it's all good. You know, like I said, i got a good support system around me. Um, and, yeah, just hoping that we can continue forward with uh, the podcast and everything because he was a big advocate, you know. Um, dad he he loved the fact that me and jared were just doing what we wanted to do and mm. have it get just do something that we enjoyed you know and um so yeah he's a, he's i got got pretty lucky with i mean if you guys go back i don't know if you watch on youtube or anything but a few episodes ago we said that we were recording from andy's house um that was a in truth a trip of not only seeing Andy, but sort of kind of the <clears throat> good, Say, good, saying goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been difficult. Like right up until the end, um, he's a very proud man, was a very proud man. Um, and it was hard to like kind of get timetables and for mm. people to come say hi, visit, whatever, you know, like that. And, um, uh, I, I said, I was like, Oh fuck it. Like if you, if you come up here, we'll record yeah you know and it was good good enough that you could actually get to see him and everything mm. so we actually you know it's quite a nice memory to have the kind of the last conversation <coughs> we had before i came back down he uh we went into the room we were talking to him and everything and he kind of perched up in the bed and he was like oh have you gone you guys gone viral yet and we were like oh no 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 not yet not <laughs> yet we're still working on it yeah. and then he kind of took a pause for a second and he said well you know, as long as you guys are doing something that you're really proud of. Yeah. And he said, yeah, we are. And he was like, well, then, you know, thumbs up. It's yeah, all good. So he's sweet by me. Yeah. Fine by me. Yeah. And that's, that's the kind of person he was, you know, like it was, if that's what you wanted to do, he'd back you. Yeah. You know, and that's why I feel like, you know, I want to talk about it on this podcast and be and so happy to be back to be recording and stuff like that. Because I knew yeah. that's. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it 100%. Exactly. Even if we're doing nothing do nothing at 100 percent, <laughs> and that motto has stood the test of time yeah. <laughs> pretty sure it was made on this couch <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um do i have anything yeah no no so that's kind of my base is covered from where i've been at what have you been up to lately what do you uh not not much to report in all honesty man yeah. i've i mean i had a week been in the office for the week kind of thing a bit slow in the office at the moment bro mm. um i actually had a pretty funny thing happen so Any you know call the chats <laughs> so you know that i am employed by uh the shed company that i work for yes and then they are also owned by the floor company that i used to work for right the yes. old man Chuck his, chucked his fingers in a couple pies. They're all in codes. Yeah. Every you know, everyone knows everyone out these ways. Yeah. And how do I sorry. <laughs> so lean forward and push your legs down quite hard. Whoa, there you sorry. Go. <clears throat> Continue. We're on recliners tonight, people. Yeah. And 
so i had quoted this like i had gone been through the process with this guy of quoting his design and everything and i'd been up to his house and done a site visit all that sort of stuff yeah i had but the whole time i was in my office attire like a black polo some pants and everything yeah and he had called me and he was like oh just when the guys come in to do the slab i have materials on site that they can use they've got some fines we've got some hard for that can you make sure that we use them and when i rocked up to do the slab in my hivers and everything he turns to me and he was like i've already spoken to jeremy on the phone he <laughs> knows that they've got materials on site and in my head i was like he doesn't realize it's the same person who the fuck's jeremy <laughs> no, get this I panicked and I said to him, I'm both people. And I said to, I said to him, I was like, oh, I'm glad you got hold of him. What? And I panicked so hard because I can't deal with those situations, bro. It was my perfect opportunity to be like, I actually, no, 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 that was me that you talked to. But I panicked, bro. And I was like, Jeremy, the person that had been up to his site, which was Jared. I said, no, I'm glad you got hold of him. So I'm still working at his house every day under the pretense that Jeremy's in the office because he's still emailing me saying the boys are doing a good job. <laughs> it's this you've, you've changed your email signature, your voicemail, <laughs> everything to Jeremy now. <laughs> but his wife's there and she's calling me Jared, so it's just a head fuck. <laughs> fuck. Oh, old codger. Hey, buddy. But yeah, I don't know. Are you one of those... Uh, but no, 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 not not at all. I if, if I, can, <laughs> I am Andy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm either Andy or Randy. Get used to it. Um, <laughs> For those not in the know, Andy is Randy comes out. Actually, we haven't seen Randy in a hot minute. No, nah, I think Randy. My, Randy was stealing the car keys and get me out of here. Yeah, my uh, my autopilot has gotten too good. We'll get into it. But I um no I. I do not mind confrontation. In fact, I probably would have laughed in that dude's face and yeah. said, called him an idiot <laughs> and said, my name's not Jeremy, it's Jared. Oh. We're the same person. Not but- only that, but when the, when the lady uh, packed my lunch this morning, she... Oh, this lady. Yeah, off camera. Oh. <laughs> she packed my lunch this morning and oh, what did she write yeah. on the lid? Jeremy. <laughs> All right, Digi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Look, call me whatever you want. Just That's don't gold. call me late for dinner. That's gold. I oh fuck yeah, yeah, I'm, fuck. I can be Jeremy. Off topic with Jeremy and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy and Randy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be <laughs> the Alabama brothers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, Randy, if you don't know. Uh, is an alter ego of mine um i'm i'm very sure of myself until i get a few beers in me and then but over the years i've learned to accrue this autopilot in a way you know like no dude you're okay yeah. andy's autopilot is impeccable thank you impeccable. thank you i've been working on it for years so i remember we were at birthdays and that and oh, who was it we were at rick's i think rick was the ultimate autopilot shout one. out rick shout out rick and we were I was having a great night. I was feeling great and everything. I saw Andy teeter over the edge of social. Yeah. <laughs> very early. No coming back from that. Very early. And mm. the uh, it's this look where you, it's like your eyes are blinds and you've rolled them half down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then your posture goes a bit more laid back. Like yeah. you literally sit beyond the point of like, Oh yeah, in my head I have fully reclined, yeah. <laughs> and I've just let someone else take over. But when you'll be like, "You're right, Andy," and it's the delayed oh, look, and then you go, "Yeah, bro," <laughs> and then but you'll cruise through the night like that. You're in every conversation, not contributing. Yeah, you're like in every circle. You're there till the end, and then in the morning we'll talk, and you'll be like, "Oh, mate, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember any, any. nothing past ten p.m. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't remember anything, but I was there." And, uh, yeah, it's. I mean, in a way, it's also, also like a bit of a shame. <laughs> like I miss out on half. Mm. I miss out on half the fun. Yeah. Someone else takes over, and um, they get to witness the whole thing. I mean, I, Randy doesn't come out all that often, and the autopilot doesn't come out all that often anymore. Don't no. don't get me wrong. Yeah. But We're getting a bit <clears> long in the tooth. Yeah. I I definitely spent years uh, cultivating that. Yeah. yeah. Curating this <laughs> this autopilot that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, we've got um, the the Netflix, Netflix in the show going in the background. <laughs> the trailer Park Boys, um, and it's it's taken me years to kind of get to that point, but it's great in some ways because I know I'm not going to be a fool. Yeah, I, I, I know I'll you've got that. To... You've got that thing of like I can go too far. Or, but no, there is that. There is a line, and actually, I got a memory yeah. from this the other day, and oh, I put no. it on the off-topic uh, story because oh, I yeah. saw an article of a police officer that had picked up an owl and was yeah. driving around with an owl in the car. And then I thought, oh, police officer animal. I remember a time. We've been there before. Where we were at my sister's engagement party and we yes. were uh, we were moving to a secondary location, which if anyone knows anything about kidnapping, once you're at a secondary <laughs> location, things go bad. It's and that was over. where we were heading. Yeah. And on the way... We picked up a horse (laughs) and there was a horse on the side of the road from, we were getting picked up a couple of hundred meters up the road and there was just this horse. It was like me, Andy, I think Jaden was there. Jordan was there for sure because he is vital in the story. Yeah. And we got picked up. A couple of us got picked up. The cops turned up. They were like, where the fuck did you get this horse? We said, we don't know. What do we do with it? And they said, we don't know. It's a fucking horse. And it's It's like, we're in Kumi. Like anybody, everybody's got a horse. And we, the cops were like, okay, someone came to pick us up, took us to the secondary location. But Jordan, uh, the animal lover, was like, I will stay with this horse. <coughs> and he was whispering it and he's like, he goes, he, he's, shh, yeah, shh, shh, shh. he's hitting the odd, the, the, come here, girl. <laughs> you know, the universal horse call for like, yeah, on. <laughs> and we didn't know what paddock to put it back into or anything. And Jordan said, don't worry, boys, go without me. These cops will give me a lift. <laughs> and... <laughs> We got a call. No, no, yeah, yeah, sorry, you go. Yeah, we got a call not long after that, and Jordan was livid, and he was like, bro, the fucking cops just said, like, good luck, and left. And he was just stuck with the horse. So we, get to the, we get to the other party, and we're having a good time, and we get this call from Jordan, and he's like, bro, can you come pick us pick me up? I don't know where I am. And we're like, fuck, what? And he's like, I think I'm on this street. And we, we get to that street out of the back of Kumu, and he's like full fucking tit sprinting down the street, like <laughs> like on on the on the berm. Is it I called a berm? I like about that. yeah, you know, like oh, like there's no foot pass in Kumu, but he was not, running he's not on the, the guy road, from but, Get Out. Just yeah, like, <laughs> just full tit running alongside the fence, and we like we pull up next to him, and we're like Jordan. And he's like oh sweet, and then jumps in the car, and we're like what happened? What where's where's the horse? And he's like I don't know. The second you guys left, the cops just took off and I was standing next to a horse in Kumu and was like, what the fuck? So, and he was lost. It, it was it was some next level shit. Um, but yeah, Randy made an appearance that night too. Yeah, I think was, we've, told, um, we've told that story on the pod before for yeah, sure. It's not something I want to keep reliving. I, 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 I pushed over, do you know pushed what, my limits. Do you know what's funny? In that, and I've got videos on my phone of that night where I poisoned you. And yeah, <laughs> yeah for some good, reason, good. yeah, I blame for you. some reason, everybody <laughs> in the back of the video is speaking Spanish, and we're, we're all just like Andy, my essay, and then we're all like, <laughs> "Is he all good?" And someone's like, "Is he all good?" And then you hear like, "Si, si, senor." And we, we, we were panicking because you were like, literally, just you just shut down in front of us, and we were like, "This is kind of." We've, we may have gone too far here so we spoke spanish yeah. <laughs> that's right you know when you like just need to restart the computer that's, yeah. all, that's all it was yeah i slept next to you that night and i, I was just, kind of like holy fuck i need to stay awake in case this dude like chokes or something well i woke up the next day fine i yeah, know we woke up and i was like you were good and you're like yeah and i was like, oh, I was well. like when did we get to jordan we were off a duck's back <laughs> yeah, we went to a third location yeah. like we, i woke up at jordan's flat and it was like I didn't even remember going to the secondary location. Yeah. I woke up in the morning. I was like, oh. But you remember the horse. Yeah. I remember being on the road and everything like that. But it was like, oh, when do we come back to George? I completely missed the whole secondary location thing. Anyway, don't um, don't do that. Don't horse and drive. Mm. So the last time I was down in Auckland, two weeks ago, we had our first ever... Are we calling it our first uh, op- off-topic anniversary birthday? Mid- mid- mid-year Christmas? Mid-year Christmas. <laughs> what are they? Uh, mid- mid-winter Christmas? What, yeah. What's it called? Mid-winter. I'm, get- I'm getting um, confirmation. <laughs> yeah. Work yeah, it was. It was a work, work do, yeah. It was awesome. Fight for life. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were unsure if it was called that. Yes, it was called The Fight for Life. Um, <laughs> set, we talked it, about, set it up, Jared. Yeah, we, I t- we talked about it before we hit it in there and everything. Yeah, we went to The Fight for Life, a charity boxing event to... Uh, so what it was was that all the ticket, all the money from the tickets and everything went towards uh, giving kids time for counselling and everything that couldn't afford it. So it, it was put on. A lot of it was put on by Mike King, who emceed the evening, and everything that he's all about. You guys know, check out his stuff. Check out Gumboot Friday. Uh, he, the event was okay. Actually, we'll start from the start. So this was put on. This was yeah. put on by DNL Events, who, if people don't know, is <clears throat> Dean and Liam Lonigan. Um, Liam Lonigan, actually a friend of ours. Shout him out. Yeah. So who was very courteous to us to this, courteous to us this evening? It was it was quite crazy how it all kind of worked out. Yeah. We 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 knew obviously Reevesy, a uh, friend of the podcast, um, was fighting on the same night versus Tammy Davis, um, and we knew he was up first. So we're like, oh, we need to get in there early. We were running a little bit late, not too late, like enough to get in, get beers, and get to the seats before Reezy yeah, got we, in. We, we we timed it kind of to perfection. Yeah. So we get, we're in the Uber, we're on our way. Andy's in a moon boot. Yeah, still um, still in the. Boot. I was in you know, pants pants and a button up kind of thing. Not 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 buttoned up, just kind of like a loose with a t shirt. Yeah. Connor, I, Connor the cameraman. I was in sh- uh, shorts and a t shirt yeah. straight up. Yeah, hat, moon boot. And like sneakers. Yeah. We had Connor with us as well. And the second we rock up, the Uber pulls into like the parking pool. Yeah. All we see, black suits and bow ties. Yeah. And we thought, holy fuck. Black tie event, ball gowns, you name it. Like oh. the, the most fancy dress <laughs> like you could even think of. It was crazy. And here we are, three hicks out of Kumu. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we're on a work, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're over on the shore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, we, we, oh, and yeah, and like I said, it, it just worked out perfectly because we got out of the uh, Uber and walked straight up to the front door. And lo and behold, who do, who do we run into? Liam. Liam. The man we know. An old friend. Last time I saw him, yeah. he was literally throwing bus seats out the window on the Green Hythe Bridge. We might have to bleep that out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's running fucking events and shit man we can't <laughs> anyway um <laughs> uh so we see him literally at the doors and it's like oh what's up man uh, and he's like oh are you guys doing the podcast thing he's like, yeah yeah we're um this is actually our work dude and he said oh fuck, come on in boys <laughs> yeah. so, and and it was it was great like good to see the guy um I didn't even realize it was his event until we talked to him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in a, um, I was actually in a dodgeball team with him and his dad, and that, and he, his yeah. cousins, is a good, is a friend of the family, mm. and yeah, caught the school bus with him and everything. So he's, you know, they're a pretty notoriously known family. His old man played for the Kiwis, played for the Raiders, and has a pretty successful career as a boxing promoter. So the first fight that we got. <coughs> The first fight, sorry, the first cab off the rank was the Jay Reeve and Tammy Davis fight. Yeah. Uh, Jay Reeve walks out and he's fucking, yeah, 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 yeah waving it all that, Giving yeah. it all to the thing, gets in the ring and he's woof, woof, cornered by Shane Cameron. But let me say this quickly to set the scene. I think we were the only three Reevesy supporters in the nosebleeds. Yeah, I know. We, oh, we were in the nosebleeds, by the way. Yeah, we the, we we didn't realize that down by the um, ring and everything, you, you got these tables and stuff. You pay thousands. It's all of corporate. Dollars. Yeah, it's all, it was uh, all charity, suits. right? So like, you suits down by a table, blah blah blah. We're we're up in the fucking bleachers, and Reevesy comes out, and we're all all three of us is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like thinking, woo, this is Reevesy. Yeah, no one else stood up. <laughs> it, was, it was just us three, and we're like, well, fuck, we got to own it now. Yeah. Uh, and we did. We backed our boy. Um, Tammy Davis got a pretty big. Uh, he got a big reception. Yeah, reception. You got to give it to the man. He yeah, knows how to work it. Um, but yeah, like- fight starts. <coughs> First round, they trade him blows. Mm. Goes about thirty seconds. <laughs> Gassed. They're shattered. They both just They're emptied gone. the fucking tank. <laughs> adrenaline dump. They've been training for months, right? Yeah, and then what have they, they been just, training adrenaline on? Adrenaline dump, dude. Like, you're, you're, you're that excited. And then suddenly when you get going from the walkout and everything, it must just sap your, like, dopamine, Shit, is it? Yeah. Dopamine, serotonin. 
and then you just must get you must fatigue so quick like oh, any that, sort of breathing <clears throat> work you do would just go out the window like mike oh. said mike uh, like mike tyson said like everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face yo and then, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but they're getting they, confirmation <laughs> but they did three two minute rounds and the battle through the next two some good some oh, good look. blows man tammy had that overhand right going jay was keeping his distance keeping fit he managed to today active throughout the fight it looked like tammy tammy was getting on the ropes a bit yeah oh but it, 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 it fucked them up for it like i mean like you could you could tell they're like gassed uh like massively and then yeah, yeah. Especially, like after the fight you you know that's, that's tammy was, was to, yeah. sorry i uh, didn't mean to no you're right take, take your thunder um you could see tammy was um, walking around like with with the crowd, you know, Tim hands was better up, off like, afterwards, but yeah. more tired during the fight. <clears throat> exactly, yeah. Like he he kind of conserved it a bit. Mm. Jay just full empty tank, and then afterwards he just could not could get not off the ropes. Get out of the ring. He, yeah, he was in the ring. Like they delayed the fights because the man was just on the ropes. Like they waited because they didn't even have like good steps up to the ring. It was like some some kid had built them for charity, like <laughs> just to get into the ring. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry is it, can i not say that <laughs> good, good on you mm. um <laughs> but it, i mean come on like it's uh, these fighters like they put their life on the line to like do this event and they could not build like a proper like stairway up to the ring that was like they had to wait for him to get him out of the ring yeah he was struggling i mean at least that's what it looked like from from our point of view yeah however reevesy good job my bro got the dub we love it well done, man. It was good to see you good afterwards. For yeah, yeah, man. We caught him outside after the fight, and he said he was like, "I said, yeah." I asked him. I was like, "So, how much of the training got implemented into the fight?" And he was like, "Mate, no shit. First five seconds, all out the fucking window." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I "Bet you've been waiting for a ciggy." <laughs> <laughs> so in the second fight, we had Honey Smiler versus Tegan Yorworth. So. Honey Bill, as they call her, plays for the Black Ferns and plays for the what did they go? By? Kiwi Ferns. So, uh, dual code international for New Zealand in both union and rugby league uh, and the crazy, women's teams. Crazy fit versus oh, Tegan, who was the host of the breakfast show on my morning crew. <coughs> so that wasn't Tegan's original opponent, right. but when Tegan's opponent pulled out, they said, "Look, we can can this fight, or we can give you a new opponent." She had the guts to say no i'll just take anyone you put in front of me awesome. but unfortunately they put in front of her not someone who was also like a radio announcer but someone that represents new zealand in two brutal sports yeah. and it was um it when within the first round tegan's coaches threw the towel in which if you don't know boxing means the coach is pulling you out of the fight yeah um, she wasn't happy about it. No, she was upset. I still see online that she is getting delayed concussion symptoms. So, yeah. I mean, I, I I see both sides to it. You know, she feels like she's still up for it. She's done all this hard work and put in all the, all of this time and stuff and wants mm. to fight. However, I believe it was her birthday as well. Well, happy birthday. Um, she was <coughs> out the thingy afterwards. Oh yeah. Um, and we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, no, I see. I see it. Like you, you know, you're a radio presenter. You're not a athlete you're not a boxer you're not this or that what is well i know she you, definitely you, put in the time she looked like she knew exactly what she was doing unfortunately it was just when you're going against someone who honestly when they're standing next to each other honey bill was built like a brick shit house and yeah. looked like an athlete that was really ready to go against a bear like she <laughs> came out fit as anything yeah traps that wouldn't quit and just like yeah. unfortunately and we saw, we saw her a after, mismatch yeah. saw her after the fight when we we're getting in the uber to go to town um, and she was in like her ball gown after the fact and it was like fuck you are stacked yeah, yeah it was like you, you're shredded good on you lady next we had chucky francis and the panther uh i can't i don't know how to say his last name pampaloni i believe and that was actually for a bout that was the first professional fight of the evening in which uh the panther took the bout oh yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he fought a good fight he um he came in with a game plan he's like to stay outside um stay on the outside and, and, and get his points i think uh the, what's the bro's name that had the belt and he was chucky chucky, chucky francis <clears throat> josh francis uh chucky was um he was going into the clinch but he wasn't rapping he would go in 
Uh, try and dirty box a little bit. Yeah, yeah. try get in close. But he was getting caught with the check hood every time he moved out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, he would he would get in close, not wrap in the clinch, try to make it a dog fight, and then every time on the way out he got clipped, and it was it was just the same thing over and over. I mean, I'm, was, I'm not a, I'm not a boxer. I'm no, not, no, I'm no. not condoning it, this but you could the... clearly see him getting hit on the way out every time. This was one of the best things. One, now that we were three fights in, especially yeah. where we were, now that we were in the nosebleeds, yeah, where it was like no one there was corporate. Mm. There was a couple other people that are a bit more lazily dressed like us, and we had a couple of old boys around us, and everybody was a boxing expert oh yeah and we had the guy behind us how'd you score that boys i was like he's working the jab you know but he's clipping on the way out yeah yeah, yeah. but his footwork made his footwork that'll carry him into the fucking eighth and we were all we everyone was drunk and suddenly yeah like yeah, experts. became boxing experts yeah totally uh, and, fuck it was fun man god it's, oh, it's, it was it's so good talking about shit like you know about it yeah i mean i i didn't know if what the fuck was going on anyway but i i talked like i did yeah exactly but i still stand by it like I, it wasn't like a, a sort of boxing comment it was just a a comment of on what was literally happening at the mm. time it was more of a the the dude went in and every time he got out he got clipped and yeah. he, he just and needed, in the end he, got he needed finished. yeah he needed to kind of mix it up and it wasn't working but you're right it was so much fucking fun talking shit with the old boys next to you uh shout out to connor who live streamed it yeah <laughs> Could have got kicked out. Connor was live streaming from the nosebleed. <laughs> Just for that one fight. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, um, Mike King announced, he's like, oh, under seat B52, B52. If you look under your seat and you find a crown, you can sit in the, sit in the next fight uh, yeah, ringside. ringside. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> everyone was on the other stand. Yeah. And every time, well, we like send Connor to go look for the fucking crown. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got you, Andy. <laughs> there he is, just like trouncing through the stands. Like, it's not here. We're like, dude, the winner's already ringside. <laughs> oh, we love you, Con. Sh yeah. <laughs> Shout him out. Next fight Thank after you, Con, that, the yeah, cameraman. Geez, Con, man. Next uh, fight after that was James Gavin and Liam Messam. I was actually in the toilet for half of this one, but I will say that whenever you get an ex league and an ex union player, both Fords with something to fucking prove, you put two guys that have played a bit of footy into a ring there's no quit yeah it was a good fight they just bashed each other's heads in yeah. and they went the distance it was a bit of fun and i think liam messam took the dub yep yep uh final fight of the evening no it wasn't sorry there was another professional your your russian boy the yeah andre <clears throat> mikhailovich versus yep. uh francis whitey so that was that was in andre's words not his best performance which yep. i think i would agree with he kept his distance, um, but he could never quite get it going, but he did enough in the judges' eyes. It, it, it did enough to get his hand lifted. Um, and then, yeah, last fight after that was Carlos Spencer versus Paul Fatuera. So Paul Fatuera was, I was saying like... It was clinical, man. Yeah, man. So he, he is he's like one of those random names that floats around in the back of my conscience because I've told this on the podcast apparently. before. So he did. Yeah. He has played for the Warriors for a season, but I remember him as a Tiger, yeah. a West Tiger. Both of us are a bit confused with Mike King's announcement. Actually, that's another point. Mm. <laughs> Going off topic, uh, we'll get back to Yeah, Mike King didn't um, officiate, not officiate, he did not announce the final two fights. They got some other dude in. I'm not sure if it was a, a, a charity thing that he had won or yeah. that was his job or whatever i thought mike king that did an absolutely great job mike king was incredible, incredible. He, he nailed the whole night he had the crowd but, going between fights yeah totally and then the last two fights he didn't do the uh, whatever you call, you know the announcing announcing yeah and it kind of just made this like a, like a stunt in the you know it did it, it, it did, just eh? made this um yeah just a bit of a stunt in the sort of flow of the night <laughs> yeah no i think you're right so paul but, fatuera came out and he like I, in my head i was like man like i remember watching this guy 2005 one of the first when i was really getting into league yeah um i think yeah i've said it before on the podcast the 2005 grand final for the nrl cowboys versus tigers um I, my dad recorded it for me because it was on a sunday night at 10 o'clock and i wasn't allowed to watch it so I watch it on video all the time. I just rewatched that one game, the infamous VHS. Benji flick, the Benji flick to Pat Richards. Yeah, and 
he was in that team so i was like his name was ingrained in my brain when i saw it i was like his name was ingrained in my brain yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you a rapper yeah. <laughs> so when i saw him pop up i was like dude where the fuck's this dude been and yeah. he was fighting carlos spencer so i was kind of rooting for paul <laughs> he's been selling signed copies of vhs <laughs> <laughs> paid off <laughs> but he was but, funny I mean, like, Carl- Carlos Spencer is a as a well more yeah he was a household name and are you not who you can't root you can't not root for King Carlos in Auckland it's his fucking city yeah yeah so and he he's came a out, fucking he came, G. dude man his back <clears throat> his lats had lats yeah I was like holy oh that's why you've been doing this pull-up challenge yeah yeah <laughs> I know I got shamed by Carlos Spencer I oh, no. and <laughs> But unfortunately, yeah, Paul came out firing and he actually, um, he got caught Carlos on the back foot. Like Carlos was trying to implement some sort of game plan, get his range going, get the jab working. And he never quite got... Didn't quite fire, He, yep. he kind of got smothered. Yeah. And in the end, prop, yeah. props to him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And uh, so Paul won. But um, unfortunately, it was the final fight of the evening and we were supposed to have... Wanangi Kopu versus Kevin Mialamu. Thank you. I can't pronounce those names. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we found out the day before and the final and the final medical, Kevin Mialamu was found out that he had an irregular heartbeat or something. So they said, look, it's best if you don't fight. Which, maybe check that shit before you go into camp. Yeah, hard. I mean, I was a little bit disappointed not seeing them fight, but if it was for something like so se- severe as like a heart mm. problem, then then fuck you, don't fight. But it's not worth it. Sitting but, in the stands <coughs> though, you were like, oh, one more fight would be really good. Like this, it may have totally needed the, one more fight. Yeah, the whole event was planned out for you know yeah. and and paced to, to have that one more grand fight. Mm. But surely they could have filled it with someone else. Maybe I don't know. It was that that late notice? Yeah, with with the main event, yeah. right? I guess. And there was yeah. that like. It, Someone, oh, Shane one was of the there promoters or... explained to me afterwards kind of the repercussions of that happening and it made sense i won't but like from a business standpoint there was not much you could do the hand was compromised and that was that yeah doctors called it so the as soon as the the uh as soon as the final fight ended obviously people start to head for the doors but there's a lot of people hanging around mm. and I said to Andy, I was like, now's our chance. And he was like, what? And then I just bolted. And I headed downstairs. Oh, yeah. And I ran downstairs. And then, because we were in the nosebleeds, right? We didn't have a suit or anything on. We didn't have the lanyard that got you down to ringside. Mm. And I got a text from Andy and he said, where'd you go? I said. Yeah, because I was on crutches in a moon boot trying to follow you guys. And yeah. I went for a purse and came out and I was like, I'm lost. <laughs> so I was like, where, from are Andy, where are you i said ringside <laughs> and then say no more yeah so obviously the confetti falls after the final fight and i'm thinking man there's a couple of guys up in that ring there picking up some confetti so what do you do jump the rope just get in the ring jump in the ring <laughs> look like we're picking up some fucking confetti <laughs> And next thing you know, me and Andy, <laughs> and we just, you didn't even look like you were doing anything. You literally just crawled in in your crutches. Yeah, just crutches and moon boot, and I got in the ring, and I was like, fuck it, I'm here. Yeah. And then in the, in the end, security was like, dude, just go. Yeah, like, what are you doing what, what here? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was all good. Yeah. That, that was our mission. We made it into the ring. It was great. Um, And when we, <laughs> we ended up getting ushered off, and we walked outside the venue, uh, and this is when we saw Reezy. It was quite funny. And there's a few other guys. Surly uh, saw him yeah. outside having some good chats. And um, <laughs> and we got wind of uh, of Whitley. There's a few whispers of after parties and things like that. And we said, "Fuck it, we gotta go." Yeah, we gotta go. I, yeah, it was, we, it, was, we, it was. It was. This was a Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday night. night. We talked to Liam, guy running the event. Yeah. Reevesy, Surly, few few whispers, a few of, people in the know, yeah, of of where to go, and we were like, you know what, it'd be rude not to. Mm. We've been in the ring. This has gone from a work <laughs> do to a work N- network ne- do. Network do. That was it. I was going to say work mish, but that, that, network do. Network do. Right. So we we're like, all right, let's get on the fucking clock, Andy. Put your game face <laughs> yeah. on. So I clocked in. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jared paid for the Uber. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we, we went off to um, sweatshop in town mm. and we get in there and it's just uh, wall not not wall to wall as in like packed like normal sweatshop, uh, which is a club in town. Okay, so it was, if, if like, like we said when we put the stories up when it was happening, the night was very much a who's who of Auckland, New Zealand and whatever and that's not necessarily like, we're not all about celebrityism or anything like that no, we no, like no. we like to think we're quite blue collar yeah. but the um it, you can't help it there's a lot there was a lot of uh heroes there a lot of people that i'd watched growing up and it was kind of like holy fuck you can't not be happy to be here yeah like you, you walk in and there's uh white only corpu sitting there carlos spencer's there joey d friend of the, oh, cheers friend of the podcast joe damon um Tegan's there, fucking. There's like girls that have been on the like Bachelorette or whatever things like that. Mm. It, it was um, it was a bit weird. It, it yeah, was so like it we're, was we're a little bit out of place in a way. We like, were a hundred percent out of place. <laughs> so we collected our drinks that took half an hour to collect because obviously we're getting served last. Yeah, we were. We weren't anyone. So yeah. <laughs> like it, it, Con, no, Connor, it was, Connor's at the bar, like trying to get us a few drinks, and Carlos Spencer walks up next. Gets ordered, <laughs> gets ordered, ordered a tray. Yeah, ordered yeah. first, and it was Connor's. Like, hey, <laughs> dude, it's Carlos Spencer. But yeah, we met, we met some really good people. We had a really good time. Um, put a bit of work in. Yeah, yeah. So that was fun. Hopefully, the fruits of our labor will be uh, juiced soon. However, the saying goes. <laughs> oh yeah, and I called in sick to work the next day and Brilliant. had a very quiet one shout out to connor who also challenged chris Marsoi of played open side for the hurricanes <laughs> and has all black caps to a fight in next year's fight for life uh, to chris Marsoi replied to him and said don't be stupid <laughs> <laughs> they took but then, photos together i've got photos of them facing off yeah, so you know and then they had um woman's rum and day, cokes together and <laughs> woman's day i have a price yeah <laughs> No, it was a good night, and um, we've we've probably uh, rambled a bit on it, but like it, it shows, like we thoroughly enjoyed our first uh, soiree. S- yeah, off-topic sort Dip of event. the toe in, yeah. Uh, got to mix and mingle with a few few people, and um, thoroughly enjoyed it. And we we'll, we will be back next year in suits, in suits. Hopefully, a fit one by then, but in. Sorry, so ladies, I was of sorry, ladies cool. and gentlemen. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, amazing time. Would do it again. Would recommend to anyone. If, oh if, yeah, dude. If you were if you were thinking of doing, like go, you know, getting out of the house, want to if you're a big MMA fan or boxing fan, and you want to just get out of the house, I know it's not the highest quality boxing or whatever, but some of these like you know like I've been. But to, even seeing some of the professional fighters that I hadn't heard of or anything around there, it was like, totally. dude, I will happily go watch them fight again. <clears throat> totally. Like I've been to uh, a heavyweight championship fight um, myself, but in terms of like atmosphere and things like that, like it it it, it kind of matched it because everyone was there for like the good vibes, there for charity. It was five dollar drinks. It was. Yeah. You know, it was it was such a good vibe, and you get to rub shoulders with some of the best, and it's 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 yeah, great. it was really cool. So, would recommend like, highly. And then since then, I guess Andy's just been binging. Oh man, like like I said, I'll I, I touch on earlier. I have been on. I've been off work since the fourth of April. What are we like? Fifth of August today. April. Yeah. What's up, April? May. June. Oh, May. June, July, <clears throat> four months. Um, what's that? Quarter of a year. I have accumulated so many TV shows and and film and everything in between, and it, it is crazy. And I have to say, the best one that I have, like, because I I went through the whole Netflix, Stranger Things came out. I've got Disney Plus, been hitting the Marvel, all the, everything else. And I went through all of them, and I was like, "Fuck, I need another streaming service." So I got Neon. Yeah, great move. Yeah, I ditched Amazon <laughs> for Neon. Yeah, yeah, highly recommend. Um, and the first thing that caught my eye was actually Euphoria. Yeah, which is great. Um, it, it's only season two. Wasn't like, um, yeah, I don't know how. Like, it's it's got a lot of hype, right? 
But the the main yeah, I've cause, never, I've never watched, yeah, yeah, the main cause after that was Breaking Bad, and holy shit, I never looked back. That thing was fucking insane. So first of all, it wigged me out that you'd never watched it. <clears throat> well, I'd never had the streaming service. A lot of never people compatible. Yeah, so I a lot of people asked me this, right? So like things were like Game of Thrones, still haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, Breaking Bad hadn't seen it until this point, and things like that. I haven't had uh, like you know like TV like a household TV. Yeah in like 10 years or whatever it's been so when i was <clears throat> when breaking bad was coming out it would come out on amc in america and so that where, was, but where does that come out in new zealand i torrented it every week right so that was when that was when pirate bay was the place to be so i had everything on a hard drive pirate bay yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> you can't see our spelling yeah <laughs> you don't see that wink <laughs> yeah but yeah, dude, Pi- uh, Pirate Bad, Breaking Bad for me <laughs> is probably my favorite TV series of all time, but I'm yet to watch Better Sopranos oh. and The Wire. Those are my next two on the list. The Wire? The Wire. I don't know. You will when you know it's, yeah. Consensus, one of the greatest shows was like that, Mad Men. They're all kind of up in that realm. I've heard Mad Men's good. Uh, John Hamm, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that's good. But yeah, like Breaking Bad, holy shit. If you haven't seen it, what the fuck are you doing? You're probably like me. Uh, <laughs> do your due diligence. Um, yeah. and do your get, due diligence. <laughs> get Neon and watch Breaking Bad. It is a, like everyone says though, they go, oh, it's a slow first season and then it, second season and then like it picks up. It, like, it continuously picks up. However, if you've never seen it before or don't know what it's about it doesn't feel like it's slow to begin with it just by the time you hit like the last season you're just like holy fuck this is insane yeah well the pilot episode itself of where it ends with wall and his undies well it's the season starts with that and then yeah. it goes back and then on the pilot episode, you're like that could be a season ending like that was insane yeah. <clears throat> but do you notice that they like throughout the series they do like lots of different um yeah the teddy bear in the pool yeah, there's there's that, but there's also um, they go oh you're comparing um, apples apples to oranges. Mm. They say it like every season. Oh really? That, yeah, there's there's certain key words and phrases like there's mm. um, so the other one I've been watching um, is Better Call Saul, right? Which is in the same sort of universe. Yeah. And one thing is that that Saul Goodman always says is like oh let's get down to brass tacks. I yeah, no idea. It, it, the brass tacks is a very American saying though. Like that's quite common turn of phrase over there. Right, but hey, there's 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 certain um, things that are said, like, yeah, like yeah. every season, and I I don't know it's be- if it's because I've watched like every episode back to back because mm. I've been doing fuck all, yeah. But uh, you can pick up on the patterns. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. What I loved about Breaking Bad is like when you say, like I said with the teddy bear thing, is that at the start of the season it teases a frame or yeah. like um yeah that's a huge. thing, and then you think like what the fuck is that versus what's happening right now? And then it slowly unfolds to like, oh shit. And then you usually catch up three quarters of the way through the season and then watch it escalate from there. Yeah, it's very well shot, very well done. Very well written. Yeah. Very well written. The char- There is, n- I don't know another show with a great to character <clears throat> art because you're naturally rooting for um, Walter White until, until sort of at the yeah. end. I'm, I'm happy to give spoilers. The show's been out for fucking a decade. Yeah. And, um, it gets to the point where you're like, no, 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 no. He's not the good guy in this. Like he turns, there's a point where he turns and he is doing a lot of bad. And then there's a lot of backtracking to cover what yeah. he's done. Like hot take for me. Like I kind of picked up on the, how bad he was like early on, how he treated Jesse yeah. and things like that. Yeah. You um, do see it. I, obviously I, I know like the way it's been set out and written that like, it's like, oh, he's trying to, Oh, it's not, it's not groundbreaking like that, but, news that he's like a bad guy kind of thing he, yeah. he because it's the whole it really thing. goes villain yeah like, it's the whole thing masked and like oh this guy doesn't know what he's doing he's also fighting for like how long do i have left versus there's a guy jesse who is socially maybe looked at as a bad guy but deep down he is the good guy stuck yeah. in a bad situation totally and that's why uh like you say you, like you uh, told me to watch that al camino after the fact mm. And I'm so fucking glad I did. Yeah. Uh, and f- and for those that don't know, um, and people might not know, because I actually talked to Jordan about this. He'd seen Breaking Bad, but mm. not El Camino, after the fact, after you told me. There's a film 
by the same director Vince Gilligan yep yeah that made El Camino um after the based directly after Breaking Bad is finished mm. and you see like Jesse driving away screaming and, and you have that film and it basically just tells you his story on kind of getting to freedom in a way and how he has to work into Alaska yeah, yeah. And like has to get there and it gives a bit of justice for Jesse and it's like it's very very well done you, you kind of get a bit of closure with that character and he's not just yeah because he, <coughs> the last season for Jesse is hell oh massively and you and you you finish on seeing him driving away from the scene mm. but I guess there's a lot of questions after the fact it's like well does he get away does this happen how does you know and then it kind of helps you Mm. Uh, picture what happens however i saw this thing on facebook the other day and i told your lady about this before the podcast during the filming of el camino did you know that uh fuck uh as aaron paul aaron paul aaron paul had the uh, uh at the time of filming el camino he was aged 42 really yeah damn so he, <laughs> I, know, I know he's considered one of those like, um, like baby faced actors. Yeah. So during the filming of the of that, when he's playing Jesse Pinkman, who's supposed to be a twenty yeah something year old like kid, basically he's Damn, actually forty two. Have and you? I, yeah. I've seen a lot of like, uh, fucking spit back or what do they call it? The um, spit on, takes on no, on like Facebook and shit, and they're all like, oh, like what the fuck why why have they got the same actor playing jesse looks so fucking old and shit i didn't even fucking notice Nah, i didn't even i wouldn't even know dude have you seen like his audition tape for the role of jesse pinkman is like it's got heaps of views on youtube you watch it and you're like there is no one for that role except that man man it's so good man that's awesome but I can't believe it. I I would I would never have known that dude was forty two. Nah. In the in the shooting of that film, I've watched his architectural digest video on YouTube where it's he's built this house in the woods and they're kind of going through his house and then going through it, it's like oh you're like an old soul, right? But then it turns out he's just an old dude. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry to anyone that's forty. <laughs> you're not yeah, old. He'd be pushing fifty now. When did El Camino come out? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, twenty sixteen at a guess. Shit. Aaron Paul, what the fuck? Shout out to Aaron Paul. He didn't need for speed movie after that. Yo, yeah, he. It was terrible. I mean, like, look. Uh, there's also, um, I've seen um, letters, um, not like actually, but uh, on Facebook and all that, uh, in articles written from. I think it was Anthony Hopkins, written to uh, uh, to uh, Brian, Brian Cranston. Cranston. Dude, oh, this was what was uh, in my notes. You've just made sense of the thing I couldn't remember. Yeah. And and there's like notes from from Anthony Hopkins writing to Brian Cranston on how well he'd never he'd never seen better acting. Yeah, it but was, then apparently Anthony Hopkins got upset with Brian Cranston because Brian Cranston took that and went, "Holy fuck! Look at this letter from Anthony Hopkins," and yeah. showed a whole lot of people on set. Right. And Anthony Hopkins was like, "No, that was for you personally." Oh. But he was like, "Dude, no, you're Anthony Hopkins, man. I like, gotta I've got to show people. everybody." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's even more flattery. I mean, I get it. Like, he wanted to be it personal. Yeah. But that's even more... Like, Anthony, surely just take that as... Like, that's the highest form of yeah, flattery. Like, Anthony Hopkins, I think he's one of the most winningest uh, Oscar dudes ever. Oscar yeah. dudes ever. Oscar dudes ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good name for a band, Gary. You should write that down. Actually, I don't think he is. I just think he but, actually scratched that whole bit. <laughs> Brian Cranston, man, is like the most humble dude ever. I, I, I feel like he's just come from malcolm in the middle and all that and now he's gotten this break and he's like fuck it i need to put heart and soul into this mm. or i am sunk did you hear about what happened with him at comic-con this year no i did not so he was walking around in a yellow hazmat suit and a gas mask dressed as walter white with the beard shaved his head and everything and they were so, like he was just walking around with the crowd and everyone was like yo that's a sick like you're doing a mean cosplay and everything so like him, and man. then he went to do like a talking part and security was like no nah, no nah, you can't come up here like because obviously all the people that are speaking aren't just wandering around the crowd they're out the back yeah and he was like no 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 like please like, tell I'll, me. I'll, let, I'll let you behind the curtain kind of thing it's me and everyone was like no you've done a really good job dressing up 
Turns out he had just stripped it off in the crowd. Everyone was like, oh, fuck, oh, it's actually no. him. I I thought he was going to go up to the like security guard and like take off the yeah. mask. And I just, am the one who knocks. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just go full white. I am the danger. Exactly. Yeah. He could have he could have. You think that off. of me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, you're getting me fired up. He, he missed the moment of yeah. just like, yeah. I am the one that knocks and yeah. just takes off the fucking hazmat. Yeah. And then the security guard just like, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honorable mention to Gustavo Frank. Bro, one of the best villains yeah. of all time. Yeah. I did not expect uh, the way that he goes out. Um, mm. That to me was like a such a like, holy fuck sort of moment. His but, building of character. There's a point where you think, oh, yeah. this dude is unbeatable. He's got every facet covered. Yeah. And and uh, touching back, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm now watching Better Call Saul, uh, which is set prior to the Walter White um, sort of saga. Yeah. Before Walter White gets cancer and, mm. and then goes through all that. Um, it is a lot slower. But there's, it's all about like sort of the surrounding cast, like uh, Sol Goodman, uh, Mike uh, Erman Trout, Gustavo Fring, uh, the Salamancas, all that. Mm. Um, but yeah, man, it really delves even further into Gustavo Fring's sort of oh, like tendencies and how he yeah. like curates things. His particularness. And ch- yeah, and it's like, holy fuck, this dude's fucking insane. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, watch Breaking Bad if you haven't, because yeah. if not, then we have just wasted 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> There's one more thing that I uh, want to mention, um, which we've been doing a lot, um, you and I, and if anyone that is into movies just as much as we are, and you like the oh, yeah, concept nice. of Wordle, we have something for you. Now, do you want to make it? Hang on, because we can tie this into two things. All right. A yum? Okay. Yep. So my yum for the Hang week. <laughs> Welcome back to Yucks and Yums, the closing <laughs> section of this episode of Off Topic. Yucks and Yums, Yucks and Yums, Yucks and Yums, and the bums not. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Andy, what is your yum for the week? So my yum for this week, um, uh, you know, me and Jared, massive on film, TV. We love watching a flick, getting horizontal. Um, <clears throat> for those out there... That, yeah, that are into like things like Wordle and whatnot, but not so much into, you know, words and spelling and all that yeah, sort of stuff. But if love, you're a visual learner. Yeah, visual learner, love uh, film. Well, we've got the thing for you. There's a thing called Framed, F-R-A-M-E-D. E-D. Dot WTF, I think is yeah, the I think it's Dot WTF, I don't know, I'll just quickly look it up. Now, what happens on Framed is that they will give you six frames of a film. Now, it's the same concept of Wordle that you've got six guesses to get the word. Now, they'll show you the first frame, and obviously the first frame is very, vague. very vague it's usually difficult. A, it's, it's usually a, like a, a scenery. Yeah. And you, what you can do, so I've pulled it up here. It's framed.wtf. I don't know why that is. Trust me, it's not a scam, not a whatever a hack or whatever. Um, and you can type in what you think the film is, judging by the first frame. And mm. then <clears throat> if you get it wrong, it moves to the next frame and it continuously gets easier as it goes on until you can start seeing actors' faces and whatnot. Yeah, usually and, by the fourth, you've got like a main cast member in frame. Yeah. So if you're not good on spelling, don't give a fuck about Wordle, but kind of so love the idea of that. And It like will film. only... if if. If you're trying to guess a really out there film, it won't even give you the option. So it'll tell you that's not in it. So there yeah. is a small process of elimination. Yeah, totally. It's not, yeah. If, if, if it's not a suggested sort of film, mm. when you start typing it, then it's definitely not it. Like it, it's not crazy uh, difficult in the fact that there is probably hundreds of thousands of films out there. Yeah. It's not like, some like niche French film from the 40s. Yeah. It's you know? Bad Boys 2. Yeah, <laughs> I don't get me that. started on There's the ones and yuck. twos. Yeah, <laughs> so that's my yum for the week. You know, moving on from the Walt, Walter White, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, all of that sort of stuff. If you're into Wordle and you like film and TV, check out Framed. Nice. My yum for the week this week. Now Thursday or Friday last week, 
I had a night at home by myself, which is few nice. and far between lately. Uh, actually, like the lady's been back in the hospital. She's working, working hard, getting to the end of her studies. And I had a night at home just to kind of, you know, be by myself. And <laughs> Oof. I was like, okay. <laughs> Problem is when I'm home by myself alone is that I'll find shit to occupy myself through the night and I end up staying up quite late and I remember it got to midnight on the Thursday night last week and I was like, ah, oh, I should really go to bed. And then I remembered I had seen, so there's a DJ, right? His name's Fred again and Fred again. Right. And he is super talented. He's a multi-instrumentalist, multi can play heaps of instruments. He's got credits for writing for all your favorite big art. All the, all the big wigs up there, he's contributed to their songs. I think he's worked a lot with Ed Sheeran. Yeah. But he's one of those guys that's always been behind the scenes. And now, I, I mean, he has been in the past, but then now he's hit he just last week released a boiler room set and for anyone that doesn't know the boiler room is like a distribution kind of thing where they go around the world and if you do film a boiler room set and it gets released by boiler room it's kind of a big deal and it's it's the who's who of the djs gets a boiler room set like they don't just let anyone release one so it's like getting your uh cod clips played on machinima yeah back yeah, in machinima. The day. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah i'm with you i'm with you yeah so he released his one hour set and he's DJing in a way but he's also got like a drum pad so he's live ed live editing his yes, mixes and everything this, yeah. i posted a clip of it yeah and that set i find that's this, talent man i that's... find sometimes that i don't have words to, to explain how i'm feeling like <clears throat> there's not always a meaning for that but i always find there's a really good cognitive movement with music yeah so yep. music, I feel, can sometimes express how I'm feeling about a certain way when I'm totally, listening to yeah. it. Not not that I'm playing music or anything, but when I'm listening to it, I'm like, this person who is the professional is doing a better job than I can do so I can relate to it really hard and I gravitate towards it really hard. Yeah, well, he's just explained what you're feeling because you can't bring the words out. And right? he's playing electronic music. There's no words to this, yeah, but true. still the notes, the live editing... Yeah. The little samples, a lot of, he got famous of, a lot of the vocals that he samples is just like little from Facebook videos or little speeches or something that he's heard and he loops it and then that will impact the tone of the song and then it builds from there. And this one hour set, man, like I've naturally, as I've gotten older, I've gone away from electronic music a little bit just because, you know, when you're young and fucking punching biscuits and that you're into it a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was... Watching someone do their craft... Especially that in something that, that you enjoy that brings you kind of back to your roots as well and can explain the things that you're feeling. It was I get mid, it, man. It's, it was midnight Thursday night where I was like, oh, that's right. That was something I wanted to watch. Yeah. I chucked it in, man. <clears throat> I listened to the whole hour. And a week later, I think today, it just hit 1.2 million views on YouTube. Shit. Send it and to me. And I have, I would say, 10 times I've listened to it. Wow. I know exactly, like, certain bits that i want to listen to um it, it hit me in a way the music hasn't hit me in a while and I, music used to be like a really huge part of like me <laughs> sorry there was, there, there was gonna be there was gonna be more to that <laughs> but it was really nice to have that feeling again of like oh fuck yes like mm. he's saying something that i can't right now through his craft and you have to respect it so fred again's boiler room set is my yum of the week Bruh, so that's some some long ass yums. Sorry, and no, no, no. I mean, me myself included, like that. And I, I love that. Have we got any yucks? I don't. I don't really. I don't even fucking. Should we fuck off the yucks? Yeah. Because we should have done them first. Yeah. Fuck yucks. Yeah. No. No, yuck, no, no yucks, yucks this week. week. We're hey. all good. <laughs> And when we say things at the same time, it must mean that we're getting to the end of episode 37 of Off Topic. <laughs> and if you ever want to get at us on Instagram for us to be your ears or a shoulder, you can get to it at us at Off Topic Chat via Instagram. Um, you can see all our videos there and our link to all our Spotify, Apple, YouTube, all that gravy, subscribe and all that stuff. Hit the download on the episodes, guys. Leave reviews. That means more to us than you will ever know. We love you all. 
Uh, yeah, emails offtopicjandy at gmail dot com, and the TikTok is at offtopicpotty. So, like I said, love you guys. Thank you for the support, Andy. Pleasure having you back in the helm. Yeah, I'm very glad to be back. And on that note, peace. Later. Good luck, eh? <laughs>